Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you the art supplies that I really, really regret buying. So if you're curious, then stay tuned and keep watching. So hello everyone. I really hope you had some amazing holidays. And probably, maybe some of you, just like me, decided to put a goal for 2024 not to spend that much money on art supplies, right? Who is there with me? Please let me know in the comments down below. But you know, I don't have very high expectations of me because I will most likely buy something. However, I'm still gonna try each and every time not to go overboard. And today I'm gonna share the art supplies that I really regret buying. And I hope that this video will maybe help you to restrain from unnecessary purchases. And let's start with sketchbooks. And the sketchbook that I really regret buying is actually this Moleskine sketchbook for watercolors. It is such a poor quality. It was actually the first sketchbook from Moleskine that I decided to try. And I had very high expectations because usually everybody really, really likes Moleskine, at least the products from their other lines. But this is not very good because it cannot hold the layers at all. The paper gets damaged very easily. And I don't know, it's so, so difficult to work with it. And I think I can show you somewhere. I even got issues with the spine already because it was kind of falling apart a bit. Let me see. Yeah, here it is, you see? It just got separated and I haven't even used it that much and yet it was a very very expensive sketchbook so if you are considering to try the watercolor sketchbook from all skin just don't and I do not know why the difference in quality is so significant because I absolutely love their classical sketchbooks I have featured this one in my 2023 favorites so and if you want to see the other art supplies I loved in 2023 then make sure you watch my uh, previous video, I will leave the link down below. But yeah, this sketchbook is wonderful. The paper quality, it can handle anything. It's, it's wonderful, it's beautiful, and I really enjoy using it. But the watercolor one, mm -mm, don't go there. The next sketchbook series I would like to talk about, uh, this one's from Hannah Muller. And I believe this is their, I don't know if it's student grade line, but it's uh, sketchbooks from the cellulose paper. And as you can see, I have them in three different formats because the price is relatively affordable. And I'm saying relative because I understand we all live in different parts of the world and our economic situations are different. But in comparison to other sketchbooks, like for example, if we compare with Hannah Muller, <laughs> what am I saying? With Hannah Muller 100% uh 100 percent cotton sketchbook <laughs> for example and i i really i really wanted to love them and i actually saw some artists making pretty decent pieces in them like sketches but i don't know they eventually i have just degraded them to be in my test books and you know i call them scrapbooks because yeah i'm just yeah i don't know it's uh, it, it's not working out at all, even though the formats are nice. And I must say, I also don't really like the this cover that they have. The feeling is very odd, but the I don't know, the paper is a little bit off. It's just, I don't know, somehow nothing that I paint there works out. And yet I still bought this sketchbook because I love the format. I haven't, oh, okay, I have started it a little bit, but so far, it's really not working for me, and I do believe that there are much better alternatives to these sketchbooks on the market for approximately the same price, or maybe even cheaper. So, And that's not to say that I love Henny Miller 100% cotton sketchbooks. They're just amazing. They're probably the best sketchbooks I've ever tried, but this ones, I think maybe you should try test something else. And unfortunately, I didn't have a chance to compare it with Arteza, for example, sketchbooks, but... Uh, yeah, if you are on the edge between this ones and something else, then maybe go with something else. And now let's move to the paper. And I love 100% cotton paper. 
but actually also like cellulose paper in a way it's just special to work on it but i do love 100 percent cotton paper i love working wet on wet but like probably many others i am trying to save money and find some paper with the similar qualities but for a lower price so this is how i discovered this uh, fabriana paper with 50 percent cotton and for me it is a no i'm i'm very sorry it's actually very difficult to work on it so if let's say you can afford buying yourself 100 percent paper and you think that you would find a decent alternative with buying this sketchbook don't go there and if you're a beginner then i think it's better to use the cellulose paper for a little bit longer maybe the one with 20 percent cotton because it just feels like very high quality watercolor cellulose paper and you know save up a little bit of money and go for 100 percent cotton because this might cause more frustration than happiness i find this paper very tricky i was experimenting recently with the, some of the new palettes that uh, i'm making and you know the first impression actually when you just start putting paint on the paper it starts flowing almost like cotton so you actually get very excited about it in the beginning except then it doesn't you know then it buckles really a lot and goes in weird waves so i got here those waves because it was buckling insanely and you really need to work hard with your brush to make the pigment move in the right direction so it's kind of neither nor and for me it is it's very very difficult to adapt to this paper and i would much rather do the experiments on a cellulose paper and then i would go uh, maybe with a smaller format of a 100 percent cotton paper if i really want to test something out but in my at least personal opinion i'm very sorry because i do love fabriano i love their paper like they're also blocks of paper that are 100 percent cotton i love their 25 percent cotton paper but in my opinion this is not a way to go i think then i would rather go with the saunders waterford or here it is hot press but they also have cold press and i would just go with a smaller format but 100 percent cotton paper and try to save money that way like i did here and got a smaller piece of paper and then the next paper is this magnani paper uh 1404 it is 100 percent cotton it is cold pressed it's yeah they say that it's for also watercolor gouache ink acrylic i must say i tried it only for watercolors but it's a very weird paper and i don't know if maybe my paper has a my or my block has a damage in it but it was a pain to paint on it because first of all the grain is a little bit too smooth i would say it's closer to hot press not fully hot press but it's closer to it and then when you try to put the paint on this paper it just leaves white gaps everywhere on several sheets all the time and I don't know what it is it wasn't just on the first sheet but also on the other sheets and i don't know i was really excited to try something new and actually when i was uh, buying it i was told that this is a paper with uh, amazing performance capabilities but uh, i don't know have you tried this paper what's your experience with it because for me it really it really didn't work out and yeah and i'm scared to buy another block of the paper to be honest because if it appears that it's not like my block is damaged but this is just the quality of the paper then i will lose money on you know the block that i'm never going to use and so when it comes to paper the last but not the least is this hardy paper i love the texture of this paper i love you know this handmade feel and everything but like I, I really, really tried to love this paper. I, I really did. I gave it several attempts, but I find it so difficult to work on it. So very difficult that I don't know. If you really want to test it, don't do like me. Just buy, you know, a smaller sheet. I just, I really like working in larger sheets, especially now my paintings, they're growing in sizes, but this just uh, really didn't work out. If you want to see how it behaves, then I have a video on my channel with the landscape. I will leave a link uh, down below. But um, yes, I, I I really think it is a waste of money, even though it is cheaper, as far as I remember, than other 100% cotton papers. But I should mention that I do love their sketchbooks. I think sketchbooks are great. 
They work amazing. I do not know how and what's the difference, but I love working on a sketchbook. But this paper, that's not for me. And I think for many people, it would be very, very difficult to work on. So be aware. And now let's move to the fun part, to the paints. And first of all, I would like to talk about this very famous Winsor & Newton Cotman set. And it seems that many start with it or they buy it to start with it. But I really wouldn't recommend it because I think the best part of the set is a packaging because it's very light, very compact, though it's still actually pretty bad in the sense that if you're painting outside on a plein air, for example, and you're trying to hold it, it's very easy to flip the cap and then uh, yeah all the water gets all the dirty water gets everywhere so it's not comfortable at all it's, oh sorry it's only for the table and please disregard the colors because i have replaced them with uh, i believe daniel smith and uh, white knights watercolors but the colors that were here they just were not good they were very pale it was so difficult to build up the intensity of the colors so in my opinion, it is much better to go for, for example, the Essential set from Daniel Smith or maybe one of the starter sets from uh, Core. And then, you know, to start learning watercolor with those really, really good quality paints. But not with Windsor and Newton Cotman. I must say, though, I haven't tried the tubes. I don't know how they perform, but this one is just... Uh, I, I think uh, the color selection is good, but the paints themselves in the Cotman, they are very disappointing. They are hard to rewet and they're hard to work with. So I think there would be more of a struggle than help, especially for the beginners. And if you really want something student grade, and I would rather recommend to go uh, with this uh, Shinhan Professional Watercolor. And it says professional, but this is actually the student line, as far as I know, because they also have uh, Shinhan PWC, and that one is already professional. But I really, really like these ones. They come in tubes. They're amazing to work with, and they are actually great paints. So, but this one, not my favorite. The next art supply that I regret buying and the art supply that in my opinion is not worth the money is this set from Rembrandt and this is artist quality monopigment watercolor box a monopigmented watercolor box I have a first impression on uh, my youtube channel so you can go and take a look how I tested them out and to be honest that impression hasn't changed I try to make a few small paintings with the set but unfortunately, it still remains, oh, how would I describe it? I wouldn't recommend spending money on this set. Uh, two reasons. Reason number one, some, not all of the colors are bright and pigmented. I find that the earth colors are very weak, like really, really weak. So more or less, you're getting a set without any earth pigments. And if that's fine with you. Sure, go ahead, but then, you know, you're paying for some of the pens that are really going to underperform and you're spending money on it. And the second part is that when you are trying to get a very intense color and to build the value, then you can see the shine on the paper. And it just then looks different. It's not the way, in my opinion, watercolor should look when you have this gloss on top. So I don't know, to be honest, I've been really disappointed with the set. I still love uh, some uh, separate colors like uh, this cerulean blue. It's beautiful. I actually think Rembrandt has probably the most wonderful cerulean blue that I have tried, but I want to love the whole set. And when I know that I have three colors that don't perform there and then they are shiny, then it's, it's difficult for me to love it. So I'm not using it and I really, really regret buying it. So if you want something monopigment, again, I think there are other better sets than this one. And if you do want to just Rembrandt out, then I would rather recommend buying some separate tube of colors that can be very good. I have, I think, one of the reds from them and performs amazingly, but not this one. And the last but not the least, <laughs> and you're probably going to throw, I don't know, tomatoes at me or something for saying this because this is very popular. <laughs> This is uh, the super granul granulating watercolor from uh, Schminke Horodam. 
but here i must say that it's not that i think the whole line is not worth the money but probably some of them are very beautiful but i just want you to be aware that for example i saw this color which is called shire olive and i haven't tested it in advance it just looked to me like a wonderful beautiful green and then i came home and it's just so very pale it is incredibly pale so if you are considering to get some of those super granulating colors i would highly recommend you to test them in advance because otherwise you might regret buying it because i really regret buying this art supply and in my case this was totally not worth the money because the color payout was so low that it's it's not worth it so but uh, that was it for today. And yeah, please share your biggest uh, art supply regrets, so to say, in the comments down below. Because, you know, I constantly look for something new. And then I would like to be aware that I actually might be disappointed if I get this or that art supply. So please share. And if you would like to know the art supplies that I actually loved using last year, then make sure that you watch my previous video. And I will see you there. Bye.